Hello, my name's Kathy Bissell. Welcome to the Golf Show 2.0. We have a guest this week who's kind of an old friend of both Gary's and mine, and he has played on the PGA Tour for I don't know how many years and on the Champions Tour for I don't know how many years, and now he's retired. Gary, why don't you introduce him? Thanks, Kathy. I watched this guy play a lot of golf in the 80s and 90s. It was a real treat. Saw him win at Colonial. And uh, he was a big hitter back in the day. I'm sure everyone is going to remember Tom Pertzer. Tom, it's great to have you on. What do you, where are you and what are you up to? Hey, Gary. Heck yeah. Um, oh. Like you said, I'm retired. Um, you know, the, I think it retired me. My short game kind of went away, so. I still hit it okay, but the, the short game kind of took a leave of absence, so it it kind of got me off the tour. But everything's good. Um, I'm up in the mountains this week uh, trying to get away from that Phoenix 120-degree weather. So, um, yeah, things are good. Good to see you guys. You too. I remember, oh, Julius, I remember Julius Boros saying uh, – the only things he liked to do were fish and play golf. And somebody said, well, when are you going to retire? And it's like, I'm doing what I, I this is what I would do in retirement. Why would I retire? <laughs> so, what, yeah, I think we're curious if you're, if you're a professional golfer, when you retire, how much golf do you play? You know, is it, is it fun to play or is it, is it a chore? You know, um, it's more work anymore than, than it is play. Um, I enjoy playing, uh, obviously not as good as I once was, and that's kind of frustrating. Um, but I have fun with it. I've got a, a, a group of guys up here in Pine Top that I play with, and it's fun. My, one of my best buddies up here is a 92-year-old, and he shoots about 80 every, every day, so that's always fun. But um, I, I, I still like playing. It's just frustrating because it doesn't do what I want it to sometimes. I think it's interesting that people who have played professional golf have an inordinate amount of patience with those of us who haven't. And I, I, we don't think that you're going to be patient with us, but you always are. And I, I just find that remarkable. Is there a secret to that? Do you just realize that golf is hard or, or how do you have that attitude? You got it right on the button, Kathy. It got, it's just a hard game. You know, it's, um, you know, and if, if most guys that, are, that I'm playing with, you know, aren't playing every day and they're not practicing and this and that. So, yeah. you know, it makes it a much more difficult game. Um, but yeah, I think, I think the patience thing is, is something you kind of learn as you go. Um, you know, I think I get, I would get frustrated a little bit when I would, you know, when I got started playing on tour and, kind of thinking about more, more my own game than, you know, the, the AMs that I was playing with on Wednesday and stuff. So, but I've, I've gotten, I've gotten a lot better at that. And, um, you know, I just enjoy playing the pro AMs. I enjoy meeting new people and shoot. Some of my best friends are people that I've played, you know, uh, that I, that I met playing on, on, uh, on tour in pro am. So it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. I think I, I enjoy playing with people and it doesn't bother me if they're shooting, whatever they're shooting, it doesn't bother me. I've got two, uh, two great moments with Tom Pertzer that I remember. One was you won colonial and uh, we've seen a million great shots over the years. I mean, not even counting tiger who did something almost every day. That was incredible. Some shots just stick with you as a as a fan or a media or a, an observer. You won Colonial, and you're on the par three. I, I Was it 13? 13. Yeah. Uh, and you did the old Texas wedge, which you never see anybody do, I guess, probably because they don't make bunkers like that anymore. But <laughs> you hold the putt. You use the putter out of the bunker and hold it. And it was really key in that victory. Can you kind of relive that shot in the situation and – and how it turned out. Yeah, it, it was, um, I was, you know, I was playing pretty good then. And um, I remember the wind, we had a, that par three over the water and, and it was, the wind was coming into us a little bit like it always does in Texas. 
and I hit a pretty good, I felt like I hit a pretty good iron shot. And, um, you know, I just picked out the wrong club, I guess, or else just hit it too good. And it went in the back bunker and it kind of went back up on the back slope and it lodged on a little bitty pebble. Otherwise it would have come back down. And, you know, I was facing a shot that, you know, if, if anything wrong happened, the water was right behind the pin. So um, I took my wedge in there, was getting ready to hit it. And then I go, eh, you know what, I'm not liking this much. And there was no, there was no lip. So I'm going, wait a minute. You know, I, I, I figured as long as I could get it to within about five feet, um, I, I was going to make it because I felt like I was putting good. So I thought, you know, just get it out get it rolling down and it was a little bit downhill. So if I just got it going out of the bunker and on the green, it would have gotten down to the hole, you know, and it was just pure luck that, 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 that I um, made it, but it came at a pretty good time. Yeah. Where, where were you? Were you leading or tied for the lead when that happened? What was the situation? If you I, remember, I think I was leading. Um, I was playing with Watson and I don't remember who else, but um playing with Watson. So I, I figured it was, he, he was the main, main guy that I was watching. And, um, um, I think it was, um, I think I was ahead and that kind of gave me a little bit of a cushion. So, um, it, 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 it came at a good time. And, you know, I, I, Watson, he was in that back bunker too. And he, he hit, you know, how good a bunker player he is. And I think he hit it maybe, seven or eight feet and i don't know i think he might have missed it so i think he might, it might have been a two-shot swing there but um it was you know it i was playing good then so i i kind of felt like you know if i could just make par you know somehow make par out of that and, but um you know i i told kenny uh, I, he had me up in this up in the tower after i after i made that and he said it was an incredible shot, you know, what, you know, this and that, and told him kind of the same thing that you did. I didn't have much, I didn't have any other shot. Um, <laughs> but we went back for, went back for um, two little, two little stories, two, went back for media day and they wanted me to re they reenacted the shot. So I said, I could be here all day making it. And lo and behold, I made it on the fourth one I hit. So, <laughs> But but the other little story is Inkster, Julie Inkster called me that next, I think the open was played there in the middle, you know, in June or whenever. And she she was she goes, Thanks a lot, Pertz. You ruined this bunker for us. They because I think the day after the tournament, the members came in and go, Hey, we're not having that anymore. And they made it so they made it so you could not putt out of that. And that's how they had to play it for the open. So for the women's open. And so she was a little bit unhappy about that. Yeah. Well, it was, it was a smart shot because it was a dangerous, it was a dangerous situation because you easily, if you hit the wedge, you, the water was in play and now you can make anything. So, Oh, for sure. I mean, I, you know, if I, if I don't hit it just perfect uh, and you know, like I said, Watson hit a great bunker shot and he hit it to about 10, eight, 10 feet. Um, so, you know, I could have done anything out of that considering, you know, I was leading and, you know, probably most likely pretty nervous. Um, so yeah, it, I could have been, I could have still been there, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you won the plaid jacket. Do you, do you wear it? Do you still have it? And do you ever <laughs> drag it out and put it on? I, I do still have it. I, I'm not sure. Um, the last time I was there, um, I, it ended up getting home. So I, I usually leave it there, but it came home with me. So, uh, it's, it's a unique, it's a unique jacket for sure. Do you, do you get back to colonial very often? Um, I went, I, I, whenever I'm in the Dallas area and I've got an, I've got a day that I'm, you know, that I can do whatever I want to do. I try and get over there and play. It's such a great golf course. And, um, you know, so many good memories, um, that, that I really enjoy. I really enjoy people there. The members, the membership's great. A lot of great people there. So I, I do try and get back over there. I hope, do they, I hope they still remember you when you show up. 
<laughs> well, I'm that, sure they do. <laughs> not, not many people, not many people remember me these days, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> well, well I, okay. there, there was one other. Uh, I'm. I hate to. Sorry, Kathy. I hate to okay. keep talking, but the one other story I got to got to remind oh, you okay. of is, uh, you know, a, a miracle happened one year. I won a six way playoff in U.S. Open local qualifying to get to sectional qualifying in Columbus. And uh, I, we were at the lakes and uh, Brook, Brookfield, I think. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not even, yeah, I think that's right. Anyways. Brookside, uh, I think. Somebody at the USGA did me a favor and I'm a media guy who's a hack. Uh, they could have obviously paired me with two tour players I knew who were nice guys who weren't going to throw a fit because I got paired with them. So I get paired with, Larry Mize and Tom Pertzer in sectional in Columbus, and yeah, that was awesome. I thought I thought that was good. I thought that was going to be your first comment that we talked about. That was a great day. We were Larry and I were Larry and I were kind of excited about playing with you. I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's right. You, no, no, no. For 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 you to for you to be, you know, a, a sports writer, to be able, to be good enough to be in a in an open because. We knew that you had to qualify to get in there, so yeah. uh, it was it was pretty cool for Larry and I to do that. And you played great; you played really good. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, everything's relative, but yeah, the hard thing was I covered the Memorial Tournament that week, and so I'm kind of working every day, and I couldn't really go out, and I needed a lot of practice to stay in the groove if I even had one. But the great moment was, you know, I just kind of sneaked out onto the range. I didn't I didn't even check in. I just parked and went to around the way to get in the range and I'm hitting some balls and uh, these two guys come up and, it, and you know, Larry Mize and Tom Pertzer have both gotten Memorial badges with their names in the, inside the little thing there. And they got a pen and a notebook. And while I'm hitting balls, they come over and say, excuse me, sir, <laughs> we need a few comments. What do you, you know, <laughs> they, they interview me on the range. <laughs> one of the you really one of the nicest things that could have happened. It really it broke the ice, and if there was any pressure, I, I mean, I just felt pressure about my game. I, I my game. I don't have a game. I show up and hit whatever I have, uh, and it 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 took relieve whatever pressure there was. But you guys had to go to a little bit of trouble to arrange that. I was so impressed. Yeah, no, that, that was the fun part about it. We and Larry's such a great guy. Um, we we figured we we needed it. We had to do something. To, that was great. Yeah, and it was. It I was totally fun. deserved it. It was, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I think Larry said, "Excuse me, sir. We can we get a few comments?" And I, I think I said, uh, "I don't talk to you, media scum." <laughs> and uh, I forget where it went from there, but it was great. And you know, we got a we had a rain delay at the lakes that day, and we went and, uh, as I recall, we went and had to sit and. It got, it was like thunder and stuff. We went getting off the course. We actually went in somebody's house and sat in their basement for yeah, like two hours. And I wish I hadn't sat against that cold cement wall oh. because I couldn't really get loose after that. But uh, so we came back out and uh, we didn't, we didn't finish the round and we had to come back the next morning. And what I remember was uh, the second morning, you know, of course I'm, I'm, I'm already out of it. I'm not going to make it, but how often do I get to play with two tour pros? Yeah. So of course I'm going to come back. Plus I figured if I come back, sorry, uh, I'm you know just in the standings I'm going to finish ahead of 40 guys who left. So that's <laughs> gonna, I can say I finished right. 80th instead of 120th. But yeah. really, like the next day and on, on the range I'm warming up hitting balls next to Steve Jones, who wound up winning the Open that year. Oh. And the other the other thing that was crushing for me is uh, as I recall, you bogeyed the last hole and that turned out. You know, and I made a par, and I remember you saying, "Well, I'd trade you for that par," and I was like, "I wish I could give it to you." Yeah, I don't I would, remember this. You wound up that bogey put you in a pl you almost hit your drive out of bounds, and I think you made a pretty good bogey, and you wound up in a playoff like what was it, eleven guys for ten spots or twelve guys for eleven spots? Yeah, and you wound up being the odd man out. Do you remember that? <laughs> I think it was six for five. Oh, I thought it was more than that. Well, I, I I'm. <laughs> I don't know. It, it was a lot, but yeah, I think I was the. I was, and you, you wound up being the odd man out. Larry had shot a 67. He made the opening. I was really crushed that, you know, you, you didn't get that. And then 
you wound up getting in via the alternate route. And of course I was going to cover the open anyways for golf world magazine. So we are, we were all, we all made the open at Oakland Hills. It was a happy ending. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That, I, I did. I do remember missing that, that playoff. And you know, that was like a, that was like a gimme playoff, but uh, yeah. unfortunately for me, it, but it worked out. It worked out. A, Anyways, I, totally I, I, great thank story. you guys enough for that little, that little adventure. That was fun. No, that's that a totally was a great story. That, it was actually fun for Larry and I too. I mean, you, you're a good player. There's no, no. Well, I, I've got a you know, number of years. Yeah. The only thing I have, well, I, I just played in the senior am qualifier yesterday and, uh, I won a three-man playoff to be the second alternate, which is like king of nothing. The second alternate has no shot. <laughs> but uh, a guy I know from my area shot six under and nipped me by eight. So I wasn't close to – I was three shots out of first alternate. But anyways, uh, I'm just an average. The only thing I have going for me You're is I'm hard. stubborn and I don't quit. That's it, you know. Yeah. And no, that, no. that's helpful, yeah. but – yeah, no, you can you can play, Gary. Yeah, it's all relative, <laughs> but yeah, thank you. Yeah. Well, another topic I wanted to ask Tom about is this distance issue. You know, you were always such a long hitter on PJ Tour and on the Champions Tour also, and you went through a change in equipment from Persimmon to the Metal Woods, and now we've got the USGA and the RNA talking about restricting the flight of the golf ball because of everybody's hitting it so far that the par fours are starting to become par threes. You know, what do you think about that? And do you think the ball should be changed? Do you think it should be something else? Well, I, I think it's a combination. I, I, I think it definitely needs to get rolled, rolled back. Um, you know, it, they're having to make, you know, like we're watching the British open and they're, 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 they've changed a par five into a par four and added 50 yards. Yeah. No, that's, that's crazy. And I, the problem, the problem I see is, you know, all the, the new golf courses, if they're building new golf courses, they're all, you know, way, way longer than they need to be. So everything needs to be more. It needs more water on the green, on the, on oh, the yeah. golf course. you know, more, more, more room and yeah. more more maintenance. Yes, yeah. more, every more everything. everything. And I don't think, you know, with the advances in technology, you know, it's hard to stop technology. But I think the ball needs to roll be rolled back, and they can do that easy. Uh, in fact, I've I've heard Titleist already has one. So yeah. um, that I think the ball, but I also think that if they could limit the size of the driver heads you know they've gotten so big yeah. where it's sort of almost it matters but it almost doesn't matter where you hit it on the club face and it still goes 300 yards okay you know the, the long hitters are still going to be the long hitters you know it that has to do with all kinds of you know club head speed and 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 where you hit it in the you know, where you hit it on the sweet spot of the club. But I think if they dialed back the ball and I think they limited the size of the driver, I think that would, that would help, you know, big time, but it certainly needs to happen. Um, they, they just can't keep, you know, and the, and the kids, young kids are hitting it further and further and further. So I, I don't know, you know, and all these great golf courses are being, outdated with this technology and with the length of uh, shots and stuff. And I, it's just my feeling. I don't know. What do you think, Gary? What well, you know, there, I, I, I don't know if I wrote this or I thought it, once you get through the list of where the major championships are held in all the PGA tour courses yeah. outside of those, there aren't many golf courses in America that are even fit to host a PGA tour event yeah. because yeah. Courses are not 7,600 yards long. You know, all these yeah. clubs, you know, you watch the Corn Fairy guys, they go out and everybody's shooting 27 under because we're out of 7,600 yard golf courses. They're playing 7,200 yard courses that really are par 68. Right. So, you know, I, I think, you know, in addition to the driver head size, 
couldn't we uh, couldn't we put a maximum on the number of dimples? You know, if they have to be concentric and maybe limited to 336, because I think the larger dimples would be a little more friction uh, and slow the ball down. And, you know, they've got these aerodynamic dimples so the balls go straighter. You know, not only are they hitting it longer, the, <laughs> the balls go straighter. Right. You put the skill back into it, you know. Yeah. Ideally, in a perfect world, you go back to persimmon drivers, but nobody could even make a persimmon driver now if they had to. So yeah. I don't think yeah. there's any it, – it's not going to be a big deal. Everything's going to well, just stay relative. Rory's going to be 20 yards longer than everybody else, even if they're hitting it 10% less. So exactly. I don't think it's a difficult problem to fix, but these guys are going to go kicking and screaming all the way. I remember yeah. in 1986 when PGA West was open because I was involved with that. The course was 7,700 yards from the tips, and it still is. But everybody, you know, looked one to the other. I'm like, 7,700 yards? Are we really going to need that? Well, turns out that may not be long enough. Yep. You know, yeah. Aaron Hills in Milwaukee, which held the 17 open, they built it with tees. If you move them all back, it's it's just over 8,000 yards. Yeah. And once a year, they have a fun day. I'll put the quote marks, fun. I can't get my hands in the picture. Fun <laughs> day where they play it and somebody shoots, you know, four over. Yeah. But nope. Nobody's lengthening country clubs because the amateurs are hitting it too far. It's only yeah. the tour players. And, you know, we've got players are bigger and more fit, and that's part of it, and the shafts. Are so good. I'm using an auto flak, auto flex shaft that's from uh, South Korea, and they didn't even file a patent because it's got some magical quality where it goes farther and straighter. And if they patent it, they know everybody in Indonesia is going to copy it. So they're like, go, go figure it out. But the shafts are part of the whole thing too. And I don't think, I don't know how you're going to regulate that. Yeah, I, I need. Oh, spring before is. I forget, before I forget, Gary, I need uh -huh. to. Need I need to know the name of that shaft so I can get one. <laughs> well, it's it's the Autoflex, A-U-T-O, South okay. Korea. And uh, I wrote a story on it. You could Google Autoflex and Van well, Sickle and probably get the details. But We'll send you the name. <laughs> it's uh, okay. it's pretty good. Yeah. I, but the, the only the, – the problem I see with doing that is where do you who, – who plays it? You know, do we – do we go to the clubs and go, you know, the country yeah. clubs and go, Hey, um, we're going to dial back your ball, which nobody, you know, no amateur is going to like, No, so, you know, but then again, baseball doesn't have metal bat. I mean, you know, major league baseball doesn't have metal bats. So they play a different, they play different rules than, you know, than the other baseball uh, leagues and stuff. So, you know, I think, I think it can be done and um, it just, it just, you just need to figure out who, who's going to use these, these balls, you know, yeah. what, um, and, you know, is it going to be like the national amateur, you know, all those events, are they going to be, you, you know, using this ball too, or is, oh, it, sure. <laughs> or, is it just, or is it just the professionals? Yeah. I, I think the only, it's easy to draw a line between professional golf and amateur golf. If you're playing for money, Here's the here's the rules on the ball, and if you're not playing for money, everybody else. Because you're right, you're trying to get people into golf. Don't take away the yardage they have; they already have a tough enough time. Yeah, that that's a good point. I think if you're a professional, this is what you this is what you play. That's a yeah, that's a that's a good idea. Can we ask you? Um, and you can say you'd rather not answer on this because it's such a, a difficult topic right now. Um, it needs are to go you, away. Are you this way or this way on Live Golf? I'm or do you wish they had offered you $15 million to go and play their tour? I've been that way the whole time. Um, you been which way? The uh, yeah, thumbs down. Okay. Uh, you know, it, it's caused a riff in, in professional yeah. golf. Um, you know, guys are not friends with guys now because of it. Um, you know, to me, to me, it was all about Greg Norman. It was yeah. his, you know, him disliking the tour so much that he's always wanted to try and figure out how he could, you know, cause problems with the tour. 
and he, he found somebody that had enough money to do it. I mean, Gary, you know, or, and both of you know well enough that in the early 90s, he tried to sign the the top 40 guys and they were going to go have their own little uh, little tour. And fortunately, all the guys that he talked to and wanted to get on that tour said, no, we're not doing that because that would ruin the tour. Um, but you can't blame the guys for taking these, this huge amount of money. Um, but I'm, I'm so impressed with the guys that didn't do it. You know, the guys yeah. that, that stood firm with the, with the tour. And of course now, <laughs> now those guys, <laughs> they're, I guess they're, I guess they're kicking themselves a little bit because surely these guys are going to come be able to come right back on the tour. They're going to figure out a way to, that they can get back on the tour and, and this and that. But, you know, I, I, those, the guys that stayed with the tour gained a lot of respect for me and yeah. the guys that left, I lost a lot of respect for, you know, the really the only guy that I, I, I was upset that left was Usti because I like watching him. I like watching him play. Um, Ustazen. So um, really the, you know, the guys that did leave, it didn't bother me that they left, you know, some of them, some of my, some of my figured that some of my figured the tour paid, paid to, to take them. <laughs> but, um, well, you, you know, they, 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 they made themselves irrelevant because it's like they vanished. Exactly. They, they play in these events that aren't, you know, they're on TV, but not really. And nobody knows what's going on. It's an exhibition thing. And you kind of become irrelevant unless you show up and play well in a major like, you know, Phil has done and Kepka has done. Yeah. They just, you, you got your money, but nobody yeah. sees you anymore. Is that? Well, you prob they probably had to get money because they knew they were going to be, obs you know, they were going to be invisible, yeah. well, basically. Here's the thing, you know, the guys that turned it down, Tom, and it's easy for me to sit here and talk about millions of dollars because I don't have any. But if you're Jordan Spieth, He's already what's right. with endorsement. Yeah. What's he going to do with more money? You right. know, you can own how many homes can you own? How many beds can you sleep and how many fancy cars can you have? If you've got two hundred fifty million dollars in the bank, what's another hundred million dollars, especially after taxes? See, you, that's can't, it's, you can't do anything with that. Now, you know, Kepka and DeShambo were looking at possible career ending injuries. So I understood why they did it. Dustin Johnson, uh, it's easy money for him. He's late in his career. Um, and, you know, a lot of the guys who took the money is the same deal. They're past their primes. But, but Jordan, Rory, Rory McIlroy could never spend all the money he already has. So what's – well, I, money doesn't mean anything to these guys anymore, the top 25 guys, because they've got more than they'll ever use. Well, that's true. But at the same time, those guys already had enough money. They didn't need, you know, the Dustin Johnsons, the uh, even Kepka, all, all those yeah. guys. They had plenty of money. They didn't really need to go there. And you know, I don't think. I think, I think Norman told those guys that hey, the tour can't stop you from playing in their events. I think he oh. said, you know, legally, we're, we'll back you on the on the lawsuit that that we're going to we'll have against the tour if oh, okay. they if, if they stop playing you i think they were all told and I, i'm this is just a guess okay i think they were all told hey you know they legally they can't stop you from playing in tournaments we'll we'll sue and we'll win that and we'll take care of all the um you know the legal fees yeah. that's my feeling and they you probably know? thought the same about the Ryder cup too don't worry you can still make the Ryder cup team yeah, Which, you know, you, you can make it on points, but I don't think any of these live guys are going to get picked. But that could still change. We don't know. Yeah. Well, I think I I'm, I I would guess Kepka will Kepka will get picked. Yeah. Um, well, I, I think Kepka is going to make it on point. points. So. Oh, that's right. But yeah. okay, yeah. I I wasn't sure whether you had to be a Deshambo is a guy who's hoping to get picked, and I don't. I don't think Ted, Bishop, Ted Bishop told us in a previous show that there was some ruling that had been set up through 2004 that allowed these guys that left to participate in Ryder Cup this year. So they can. 
if ah. they're picked. Yeah. yeah, some weird. There's thing. no rule against it this year, but it's in future it's years. A, it's got an expiration probably. date of through this year, so you know for the yeah. next Ryder Cup, but it's not going to be an issue now because it's going to get settled. So yeah, you know, yeah. except now you're in bed with the Saudis if that bothers some people. You know, and obviously it does. Yeah, it's uh, they had a they were talking to the 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 head of the RNA yesterday on TV. I'm sure. Yeah. You guys, and he was he they he was talking about having the what is it pi whatever it is yeah PIF. PIF, you know fund some of their events yeah and really the british open maybe is going to be funded by <laughs> no but the, 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 the problem is and i think why they had to why they had to merge is the tour could not keep on no running these 20 million dollar events you, you know. can't no they can't sustain those those huge those elevated events with 20 million dollars where are they going to yeah. get that money yeah so they they looked at all that money out there and as rory said you can either we can either compete against them or we can take the money and be on be be business partners and from a business standpoint it was smart to do this even though you know you got to swallow pretty hard to to get it down, so yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. So the Saudis guess, bought their way into golf. They were successful. They they win this one. Guess what? It's well, time for Gary. It's time for the shameless plug. Shameless plug. We need people to click on like, <laughs> click on subscribe. You will not get emails. You're not going to be bombarded with spam. However, you will get enough viewers. We're trying to reach our goal to make. So each make 17 cents in cash from doing this show. I know it's lofty, but we think we can get to 17 cents. We get enough viewers. So click on it. Um, you've got some uh, some charity stuff uh, we'd like to hear about. Some, can you tell us about some of that? Well, I do. There's some there's some stuff around Phoenix that, uh, you know, smaller um, events that we try and help raise some money. But um and I, I still do some a few outings uh, around the country that are I, I oh. like I, that are enjoyable. I love doing I love doing outings for good causes, um, and 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 it keeps me a little bit in the game. So I, I like doing that. And my my deal now is I just I uh, since I've retired from playing golf, professional golf and stuff, I went and got a couple of my friends back home. Uh, talked me into getting my real estate license. So that's what, that's where I'm going. To, <laughs> well, Kathy, you got competition. Look out. We're going to talk, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> With my, I, it, it's based, they're basically um, golf properties in the Phoenix, Scottsdale area. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I might have a little bit of a, an opening there, but I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to it. I think it'll be fun. I've talked to one of the one of the one of the guys that's that's going to help me with it. Alan McDonald played uh, college golf um, at I think Alabama and was is Scottish and he's really a good player. So um, I think it'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Well, we'll watch for that. We'll have you back on when you get involved and everything's organized. Yeah, Kathy's okay. in the golf course real estate business too. So you guys better talk. We better yeah. talk. <laughs> Sounds good. I like that idea. Okay. Well, well, thank you very much, Tom. As usual, a pleasure to to be around you. And uh, we hope you have continued success with your outings and your golf game and your new real estate career. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks a lot for having me on. It's great oh, to sure. see you guys. You too. Bye-bye.